Good evening, everyone. I'm delighted that you can all join in to this evening's class. And um, this evening we're going to work on open up the hips, front of the hip bones, and as well we're going to be some work on the chair. For us, that um, maybe our stability is not that good, or we've got like, um, symptoms MS or whatever, you can do some work as well on the chair. So, okay. We're going to either sit on the chair to centre in, or you can sit cross leg on a raised height, two blocks, or whatever height you've got. And we're going to take the legs wide, feet we're crossing the air at the shins, and then we're going to lift the sides of the trunk up as you take the fingertips down to the mat. And as you take the fingertips down, you don't want to allow the weight to go down from the fingertips, you want to ascend up. So we're going to roll the tops of the shoulders back, and release the shoulder blades down in the back, chest is well open, and then you want to feel broad across the, the collarbones. Good, so again, keeping the collarbones lifted. Feel that lift now from the base of the abdomen, so that the back of the sacrum has to move in, and then you want to feel from the tailbone to move forward towards the pubic bone, pubic bone towards the chest, and then take the hands up. And again, just move the shoulder blades in and up. Good, and then join the palms. Take the base of the thumb joint into the breastbone and just press the palms together and make sure that you keep the weight back. Good. Take the chin in and take the head slightly back. And then just close the eyes. Allowing both eyes to move back and down into the dark. Feel the front of the, of the throat resting towards the back of the neck. And again, keep that lift, allow the shoulders to come away from the ears. And just then we're going to observe the breath. So behind closed eyes, we're going to focus on the breath as it's coming all the way into the body. So we're going to take a fuller, deeper inhalation. And then slowly breathe it out, letting go of any tension on the body on the exhalation. And again, without any effort or strain, taking a deeper, fuller inhalation. Feel that you're filling up the whole corners of the collarbones there and chest. And then on the exhalation, letting go of any thoughts we have before we come into the room. We're going to concentrate on the yoga we're about to do. So then we're going to take the back of the hands towards the knees, maintaining that lift on the chest, throughout the chin towards the chest, and slowly open up the eyes. And come on. And we're going to extend the legs long, and we're all going to come around and add a move of breast. So we're going to keep the hips well back on to the heels there. For us that have knee, knee problems or ankle problems and can't sit down this low, remember you can come forward on a chair, sitting on a chair and come forward. And then you're going to extend forward, keep the whole back row of the pelvis moving towards the heels, extend the arms out and have some sort of brace for the, for the forehead. So just allowing the forehead to come down. Feel like we're not aiming to get the head to the floor. We're aiming to extend and lengthen the front body. And then release the shoulders back. Keep the hands spread wide and open. So feel that broadness across the back rim of the pelvis, across the back of the, sh the shoulders. Shoulder blades spreading. And then we're going to come up onto the knees, tuck the toes in, and we're going to go up into Adimuka Swanasana, downward dog. So again, pressing the whole of the hands firmly onto the mat, elongate the arms and the legs, keep the hips lifting higher. Good, so go on stretching and lengthening from the heel of the hands towards the, towards the hips. 
one long line there and Russet can't get that action, bend the knee slightly. So open the chest more towards the front of the thighs there. Get the sit bones lifting higher and then strongly work the legs back. So release the chin away from the chest. Scrub up more, toes lifting. To open the back of the legs. Back of the thighs is open. Backs of the knees. Feel if your heels is down. Well then, bring your feet further back there and try to get the legs to do more. You want every part of the legs to work. So bend the knees. Set the hips back onto the heels and allow the head to go down. And we're going to do that once more. So keeping that long extension with the both arms there. Good. Come up onto the knees. Spread the hands wide. This time take the feet wider on the mat. The full width of the mat there. And then we're going to be on the ball pad of the foot. We're going to scrub up there getting good height in the hips. Toes lifted, knees and thighs is lifted. Good, and then make the head of the top of the thighs head back. Head of the shin bone go back. And feel that stretch from the front of the ankles towards the heels. Bringing the heels down. Go on lengthening the both arms and legs. Good, toes up. And then we're going to walk forward and take Yutanasta. So Yutanasta, feel if the hips is over the heels, you're going to be light on the fingertips and you're going to move that dorsal deep in. And you can do the half Yutanasta if you feel that's not comfortable for us. If you feel if you have sore back or your, your um, legs is tight there, hamstrings, so you can always just do half Yutanasta. Lengthen the whole front of the body, making the top of the thighs head back. Good. And then from here, take the hands to the thighs and come up. Good. And we're all back from that. So we're going to get ready to stand again, just until us. Stand in the middle of our mat. So probably the best way is to go sideways for us just for a minute. So, um, I can't see you all, so I can't see what we're at there. But then we're going to line up the big toe and the inner heels there. So you're lining them up and then you're going to spread the toes wide. And then as you do that action, press your inner heels down and the mound of the big toe. And then shift the weight back. So it's, it's here you get the grip on the hips. When we're here, we're just pushing until our number and everything's done. So you've got to shift the weight back to the heels. Get the grip here on these outer hips. Good. And then you should feel the length in the front bar. The whole front of the thighs has to ascend up. The groins and then the arms is long. And you want the length in the both arms down, keeping the weight back, making sure we're not pushing until our lumbar, pushing forward. So as we take the arms back again from the trunk, Keep it further back, open the collarbones. Shoulders down. So lengthen the arms down towards the mat. Good. And the weight back, tuck the chin in and just take the head slightly back. And then draw the abdomen back more and still get the firmness and the grip and the outer hips. As you press the feet down and keep the weight back. So Urpa Hastasana, extend the arms forward, open the palms and go up. And then still keep the weight back on the heels. Do you notice how it's hard to keep the weight back? So go on, shift the weight back more, lengthen the front body as well as the back body. So you want to go on, lengthen the arms. Squeeze them out your arms in and extend the inner arms up. And then keep the waist back more. Good. Relax the shoulders down. And come on, we'll be forward and down. And then we're going to turn off the hands right up into the webbing of the fingers there. 
And as we do that again, you're going to turn the palms, extend the arms long, go on extending the elbows, keeping the elbows really tight there, and then again, inhale, come up. So for us to feel it hard to balance there, you notice we can sit on the chair and do this, or you can have the feet even half distance apart. Keep the weight back on the heels. The first time. And then go on lengthen. So squeeze them out, your arms in. And then keep the inner arms extended up. So look up there, check that the palms is lifted lower, thumb side of the hand. And then come all the way down. And then we're going to change. So again, whichever little finger was below, we're going to change it to the other. So right up tight. Lengthen the arms away again. Feel that stretch there. You should feel it on your back chest. The back of the chest is open. And again, go up. Then squeeze out your arms in. And extend the inner arms up. And keep the weight, still shift the weight back. Keep that grip on these outer hips. Lengthen. Shoulders down from the ears. And come all the way down. And just extend the arms down. And notice and get that feel now of the shoulders, how much they have worked there. How much the arms has worked, how much they can lengthen down to the mat. Good. And then we're all back from it. So our next one now, we're going to catch the hands here. And to lock the hands again. And again, you're going to have the hands just here on the sacrum. And then bring the elbows back. As we bring the elbows back, bring the shoulders back. You notice how the shoulder, shoulder blades move down the back. And then extend the arms up. Keeping the weight still back. So lengthen the arms out long. Go on reaching. For us that cannot do that easily, we're going to use a belt. Or a towel, or whatever we've got there. Just use some bit of more width there. So we can start off with the palms even facing forward. And you can feel how you can broaden across the collarbones to wherever you feel for us that's wider on the shoulders. So go on, taking the arms back more, shoulder blades down. Tops of the thighs is lengthening there. Good. And then release and come down. And we're all back from it. So the next one we're going to practice now, we're going to do it on our mat here. With the feet just um, feet together in Tadasana, we're going to do Yukatasana. So if you want to use a wall, use a wall again for this one. If not, we're going to stay in the middle of our mat. So if you're using a wall, you would be away from the wall, say two or three inches. And then we're going to raise the arms up. Sit down in our seat. Now you've got to shift the weight back to the heels. And you're going to go on extending the arms up more. The back rim of the pelvis is moving down against the wall as you sit low. Lean slightly forward and come off the wall. Know how you love this pose. So again, we're going to keep the back rim of the pelvis moving down towards the heels. Abdomen lifted. You should not see your arms at all. Look up. Keep the chest lifted. Sit low in the seats. Come all the way back up. And take down the arms. Well done. And again, we're going to do it now with the chair. So we'll sit sideways on. So for us that want to use the chair, um, again, as much full pass as you can, you can use it there. So again, we're going to have the feet here. Not too far back, but press your heels down. Sit towards the front of the chair and extend the arms. Keeping the abdomen and the whole chest lifted. Now lean just slightly forward. Slightly forward there and then come off the chair. And don't go too high. Keep the tailbone moving down towards that chair. And keep the chest lifted, abdomen lifted. Go on keeping the tailbone in. And come all the way back up. And take down the arms. Well done, everyone. And we're back. So the next one we're going to practice now um, is Warrior Two. 
So we're going to practice it today like this here. And we're going to sit on our mat facing front. And the chair, and you're going to take your right leg out. And again, as you take the right leg out, turn the whole of the right leg out. And then you're going to walk this left leg back as much as you can, and then slide the right thigh back onto the chair. So you're going to be here, and you're going to keep the knee out. Feel that you've got to suck that right foot up deep in, and then press your outer left foot down. And then take the hands to the chair and lift from the base of the abdomen up. So go on, pressing that outer left foot down. Good. Keep pressing that outer left foot down. Keep sliding back onto the whole of the seat. And make sure that that knee is out in line with the second or third toe. And then extend the arms. Now keep the chest facing forward. The whole of the chest. Then pull it back with the left arm as you look out over your right. So firmness on the back leg. Pull back with the left arm more and sit down into the, into the chair. Keep the lift in that one. Good. And then come back to centre. Then we're going to just again turn, turn, draw this leg in and sit in the middle of the chair. Very, it's lovely done in the chair. You get that good right ankle on the front leg and you equally have to work the back leg as well. So now we're going to turn the whole of the left leg out. And then we're going to walk the right leg out again as far there as we can. Keeping the inner arch lifted on that right leg. Slide now the whole of the left thigh onto the chair. You can move forward. So notice again, have you got heel and line with that step of the foot. So again, turn, make sure that that knee is turned well out. And this outer left, this buttock is moving in. So take the hand here, and then just give that action of rotating that left knee out, and then keeping the right thigh strongly back. Outer right foot down. Extend the arms. Turn the trunk and the chest to face front. And then pull back with the right arm as you look out over the left. Good. So firmness on the back leg. Release the shoulders down from the ears. Pull back with the right arm more. Good. And then come back. And we're going to turn the right foot in. And again, just sit on our seat. So again, just have the feet to pull up to the mat. Or wider than our hips there. And then just take the Elbows down and the inner arms inside the inner legs and reach for the front legs of the chair and just allow the head to go down. Release and the lumbar. The rest of the back pain, this is a really, really good pose to practice. So we'll go on. Down, let go of the head and then come all the way back up. So we're going to practice again very good last the two now from stand. So if your balance is not good, you can have the chair just to the front. So it's there if you need it. If not, we're going to just practice it on the mat. So from here, raise the arms up, bend the knees and jump. So turn the feet again to face front. Um, shift the weight back onto the heels. Get that lift in the base of the abdomen and the whole body groins there and the inner legs. And then extend the arms out. So for us that feel our balance is not good, here's where you can hold your chair. Now turn the whole of the right leg out. And notice again as heel in line with that step of the foot. Keep the firmness on that back leg. If you think your legs are not wide enough, you can go wide. So you go down, go down again. Keep drawing this outer right hip back into the hip socket, open from the groin to the inner knee, and then extend the arms. Chest open. Good. Go down and make a right angle. Pressurize your left foot down and pull back with your left arm as you look out over your right. Good. So pull back with the left more. Keep the chest and the trunk upright. No excuses now, go down, further, go first, 
Get a good right down. Like you did on the chair. Good. And come up. Turn the feet to face front. And we'll go to the other side. So again, just check your distance from the front of the mat. Make sure we're equal distance there before you start. So for us, it needs to have the chair here. Hold it here. Even if you feel you need to work on the, the front body more or try to shift the weight back more. Then extend the arms out. Turn the whole of the left leg out. For us, just hold the chair. Get that grip. But try to suck this outer left buttock deeper. And then you're going to bend. So as you go down again, lift up. All you're doing is bending your left leg. And then get the firmness on the back leg. Make that right thigh hip back. And extend the arms up. Good. So again, pull back with the right arm. And look out over the left. You could go on down. Imagine we're still in the chair. And lift from the base of the elbow. Push the knee out. Suck that outer left buttock deep in. Come all the way back up. Turn the feet to face front. And then just walk the feet together. Good. And we're all back from that. So stand it again and Tadasana. Now notice again the equal um, work on the both legs there. And the, the grip on the buttocks. So now we're going to do Paris Bhattanasana. And for us again, we're going to do it with um, a chair. So again, if you want to have the chair, if not, again, we can, last week I was saying, we can have the hands on up the back here, which keeps that lovely open on the front body. But if that's not possible, remember, you can always just take the hands to the waist. So if we're here, nicely centered in the middle of our mat there, and if you have a wall to step your foot back into the wall, as uh, best to use the wall as well, but I'm just going to show you from side result. So take your left hip back, slightly turned out to 30 degree angle, and then take your right leg forward. And again, notice as uh, heel in line with heel or heel in line with that step. So if you feel your balance is not good, maybe take the right foot slightly more to the right, an inch or two. And then take hands to the, the hips. Now you've got to turn that left hip more around. Draw this outer right hip back. So the outer right hip has to come back, this leg to send it up. And then the back leg is your downward dog leg. And then extend the arms. Keep working that back leg strong. Think about the back. Now inhale, and as you exit, extend and go forward. So don't use the chair as a prop to lean on. Use it to get extension. So keep pulling this right hip back and then broaden across that left buttock more to the left. Stamping the both feet down. Dorsal. And then for us it can go down easily. Remember you can extend even further with the dorsal. So as soon as you shorten the front body, you lose it. So you want to keep that long extension. So here you're reaching past the foot now, if you're way out past your foot. Then take the hands down, to go down flat. You know you can go down further. And then you allow the whole abdomen, the chest and the forehead to rest. If that's not happening, just be even here. Or get that nice length in the front body. But keep working the legs. Gripping them out your hips in. And then I'm here to come up, step the feet together and come out. And we'll do the opposite. So again, stand it in the middle of our mat there. Hands on the waist. And then take your right foot back. And then take your left foot forward. So again, just press that outer right foot firmly up to the wall. If you have a wall behind there. And turn the hips. So literally turn the hips with the hands or sails there. You've got to bring that right hip well forward. But keep stamping that right outer Heel firmly down. And then extend the arms up. Lengthen the sides of the trunk long. And inhale. And as we exhale, extend and lengthen forward. So again, don't just go here and drop here. And keep using the, the chair as length to go forward. So if the hands is up the back, and remember you don't get the extension. 
but you've got the hands to move the dorsal up. So pressurize the both feet down, draw the front leg up more and bring that right hip more forward and then go down and lengthen. Here we might be able to go further, lengthen over the chair. Work that back leg. Good. Stay in, lengthen, lengthen your chin forward, kneecaps lifting. Keep the whole of the legs lifting up. And then if the hands come down easily, see if they just barely touch down, then look forward, keep the length in the front body. Pull up the knees and the thighs, and maybe lifting up onto the heel helps to bring that width into that outer right heel more. Draw the abdomen round more, and then allow the head and the foot. If it didn't go down, lengthen here. And then come up, step the both feet together. So from here we're going to be 12 inches off the wall. We're going to lift the buttock flesh up. And then if you have a chair leg like this here, you can bring the back of the chair to the front and bring it right up onto the hip bones there. For us that don't have the chair like this, you can just use it like, like so, like an ordinary kitchen chair, and you can come down that way, so your head comes down. So if we're up not we have, we can just bring, so it's throwing the hips, lifting the hips higher, the sit bones are ascending up higher up the wall, and then lengthen forward. Let go of the head. Shoulders up from the ears, so lift the shoulders up by widening out the elbows, and this is a nice cooling action for the brain when the head goes below the heart area. So soften the abdominal muscles and see how you can go further down. Release the down. Backs of the knees is open. And then look up, take hands back to the wall and come up. Good. And we're all back from that. So we're all going to get ready now to do very good rational work. Um, again, it's another, uh, one of the stronger um, poses you can do with the chair. So we'll do with the chair and then we'll do without the chair. So for us that's doing it with the chair, we're going to, be, see, we're going to bring our, move the chair here just to the edge of your mat, to the right edge of, our, of my mat, and I'm going to bring my right leg through. And then you're going to extend your left leg back. So see if you just bend your leg for now, you want to open these um, front of the hips that we're on about today. So we're trying to release the same. And if you sit long all day or your job is sitting at a desk, these all shorten and then your lower back gets weak and dull and it starts to pinch into your lumbar. So the more you can open here the better. So go on then, extend that leg well back. Right there. So if you can lengthen it as much as you can and then push away from the chair. So you might need to move the, the left foot further back, push away from the chair, keep that back leg strong and then again feel that your whole of your right thigh is nicely on the chair and keep the chest lifted and then extend the arms up. Keep that back leg working. Good. Head back. Keep the firmness on the, the back leg. And come down. Walk back in. And change side. Good. So now we're going to practice on our left. Move the chair to your left of the mat. Take the whole of the left leg through. Then you have still a bit of mat left to make sure the right foot doesn't go on behind your left. So take the right foot to the edge of the mat and for using the mat there. And then you're going to walk it again. You can bend it for a minute to just lengthen and open that right groin. For some of us, this will be a very hard thing to do to get that long extension on the back leg. And then push away from the chair. So the abdomen, the torso has to stay lifted. Tall, you're really working that back leg. So again, you're going to make the firmness on the back leg do more. You're going to push with your hands, 
to lift from the base of the abdomen there and then extend the arms up. Tailbone in. Bring that right thigh back more and the right hip forward. Head back and then come all the way back. So join the both legs together and come off. So we're going to sit again on the front of our seat like this here. Um, the front or the back, whichever. Uh, the legs is wide. If you can go for the back there, come slowly down now. Grab hold of the back bar of the chair if you wish. Keep the knees squeezing on around the top of the shoulders. And let the head drop. But don't keep bringing the chin tight to the chest. Just release the head wherever. Take the chin slightly away from the chest. And breathe. So you want to spread again across the lumbar here. The lower back muscles, the buttock region, you want all that needed to spread sideways as well as long. And then come on to back. So we'll, we'll do very much that's the one now without a chair. You still need to have the chair do so. You know, for us that can't even take that leg back, remember to keep the knee bent just. So we're here and we're going to be in the middle of the mat. Again, you can step out from the wall or do the classical way to jump. Raise the arms up, bend the knees, spread the feet apart. So the legs probably need to be a good three to four feet apart. Then pressurize the outer feet down. Lift the inner arches and the inner knees there and body groins and tail going up. So the weight has to shift back and then extend beyond the fingertips. Feel that length on the arms now. Turn the palms to face upwards. Go on revolving and turning the little finger side more as you shift the weight back onto the heels and then go up. So go on lengthening now the sides of the throat. You want to remain tall in this pose. So bring the whole of the left foot forward and turn the left foot in and then Turn the trunk to face front and turn the right foot right. So notice your uh, alignment. You want to work that back leg. As heel in line with that step, check as it is. If your balance is not good, take the right foot slightly to the right. Now go on extending and working that back leg. Bringing the left foot more around. And in the heel now, and as we exhale, we're going to bend the front leg. But lift the trunk up. Bring that outer right hip back. Keep the firmness on the back leg and move the tailbone. Go down and make a good right angle. Good, and then on the heel to come up. Turn the feet to face front. And just rest the arms down. So again, notice the feet and the equal distance there from the front of the mat. And then get that grip and action in these outer hips. And the only way you can get the grip on action is to shift the weight back. Remember, on Tadasana, shift the weight back, extend the arms out beyond the fingertips and turn the palms of the, the hands to look up. Roll the shoulder blades down the back as you extend the arms up. So go on lengthen up out of the pelvis there. Feel that long extension, now turn the whole of the right foot well in. Good, turn the trunk and chest to face front this way and turn the whole of the left foot out. So for us that don't manage this easily, use the chair. Go back to the first one. Then work that back leg. Turn the trunk and the chest. Keep lifting the both arms, the sides of the trunk. And here, and this way, so now we're going to bend our front leg. So pull that left hip back more. Bring the right hip around more and lengthen up, tail going up, head back. Have you got a right angle there? Make right with the chair, and help us to get that good right angle. So go on extending, come up, turn the feet right, and jump the legs together. Well done, everyone. And again, we're going to sit on our chair like this, like so. Take the feet wider. Remember, you can always be um, you can always be to the very back of the chair and then come forward and slowly come down. 
Catch in the back rim of the chair. Pressurize the knees. Let go of the head there. Take the feet a bit wider if you feel you can. Get a good action there. And release that. Squeeze the knees in around the top of the shoulders. As if you're making a sandwich there, you're squeezing on the, the whole of the, the, of the trunk. And again, look forward and heel and come up. Good. And we're all back from it. So now we're all going to just come off the chair for a minute here and we're going to have it forward. And we're going to come down again to have you the last in there for us to um, see for us to don't go down to the floor easy and lose, if we lose it on the front body, stay half. Use the hands at the wall or at a chair or wherever you need. So now make the top of the thighs hip back. Feel that the back rim of the pelvis is moving in this direction. As you press your heels down, kneecaps lifted. Good, and then we're going to come in. Um, see halfway here now. And you're going to grip the sides of the chair there and we're going to come up. Tail go down. So again, you've got to lift up. For us, it's broader on our shoulders there. Maybe you could use two chairs and you'll be in between the two chairs. And then back again and then half the last. So make the top thighs hip back. Roll forward up onto the ball, hand and foot and lift up. Shoulder blades move down the back. So notice how it's easier to do upward dog in a chair because you get the height. So back again, make the top of the thighs hip back more. Go on lengthening, thighs out more, forward again and come up. Tail going up. Good. And then walk in, walk in and come up. So we're going to sit on the edge of the chair. And we've got the hands on the sides of the chair there. Lengthen the arms or catch the back of the chair and feel how it brings the top of the shoulders back. So again, this is nice for us that um, have, that can't really catch the hands this, this way. It's nice to just catch the back of the chair. So you're sitting well forward and you're reaching as far back, allow the ribs to stay back and move the shoulder blades down. And then you walk here, now take the hand again to the sides of the chair. We're going to walk forward, roll the thighs in and lift up. So the buttocks, it has to be firm in the buttocks. Grip the outer hips, get the chest lifting and come all the way back. And sit down. Purge Bhattanasana on the chair. So I'll do one more. So it's all about the grip and the box. Um, so you're going to catch again the sides of the chair. Walk the feet forward. Walk more forward. Roll the thighs in. Pressurize the big toe mounds down. And move the dorsal. Get the chest lifting high. Good. Work the legs. Again. The buttocks, the glutes have to work and then come all the way back and sit down in the chair. Good. So we're all going to get ready to do our next one. Now we're going to lie down on our mats maybe from here. For us that find it hard to do this pose here, we can always practice with the chair. So you grip the sides of the mat, you're going to bring your feet down to the chair and you're going to go up. So it's nice to have the chair back at the wall, as you've said too, but I'll be able to go up. Get the feet here to the front and get hot. Go on, lift up high. The bottom crease has to go up. Work the hands back on the mat, the length of the sides of the throat. Get the shoulders away from the ears and then nice and slowly come down. So we'll do that again. Remember the safest way is to probably, and these ones is always to have your chair like back at the wall. So I just am not using the wall because I don't want you to look at my back and head. 
but um, so we're, I'll have it here. But um, just so in case it would slip or that, at least if it's at the wall, it'll not slip. So we'll do it again. So this time, I think you can come in a little bit closer, do so. So we're going to even maybe try to catch the legs of the chair. And then stand the feet down, pressurize the feet down and get the lift. Go on, get the buttocks lifted higher. Good. Walk the hands down towards the legs of the chair and feel the shoulder blades so you want to roll on to the top of the shoulders. And then legs here again, front to the thighs. Open these, groin area. So go on lifted and base it slowly down. And then just let the legs rest for a minute on the chair and then come back a little there and just relax. Relax the back. So we're going to roll out of that. Then we're just going to give it a couple of goes on the mat. So here we go again. Stamp the feet down. Feel your feet parallel, half distance apart. And then pick up the hips. So again, rock the sides of the mat. Keep walking down the mat and go up. Now feel the length here uh, again as you go up. The buttocks has to move in and up. Good. Roll on to the top of the shoulders. Get the legs doing more. Front of the thighs is to lengthen out. The head of the shin bone back and nice and slowly down. And again, so release and recover and breathe there. <laughs> and we'll do one more. That's the last one now. So again, that's really good to open up the back of the lungs and the chest there and open up the diaphragm. So I make it sure the feet parallel up this. Pick it up, you're going to go. Walk the hands down more. If you can't have your fingertips even on your heels, but make sure that your knees is not pushing over your feet. So you want to hook the head of the shin bone back. Pressurize the feet down. Elongate the arms, go on up and go higher. Good, pick it up and go higher. Release, and again, slowly come down. And then just walk the feet more forward. Good. And then roll over and just come up. And we're going to sit in Dandasana. So again, you're going to um, have the legs out long, pressurize the heels down, and just take the hands either side of our hips. So as you pressurize the hands and the feet down, feel that you're rolling the tops of the shoulders back, chest is open, Broaden across the collarbones there and see how long you can get the arms. Good. Try to lengthen the arms more and then release. So again, make sure that we're up on the sit bones. If your hand, the palm of the hands don't go firmly down, have a raise, like a book, two books there and two bricks. So for us, that feels we cannot get that long extension or that this has happened you want to push up if i was to use bricks my buttocks is off the floor that's nearly the action you want to get so again pressurize the hands down don't have them away back here be upright and left now again extend the inner heels away make the whole top of the thighs hip back feel that length from the tops of the shoulders down to the wrist there. Pressurize the hands down. Broaden across the collarbones. Good. And then release. Next one. So we're going to keep that action now as you take, we're going to, as you take, keep the hands exactly where they are. We're going to bend the knees and we're going to go up. So you're going to pressurize your feet down and then feel that same extension in the arms right into the shoulders. 
Then let the legs work, as you did in the last course. The buttocks has to work there. Squeeze them out your hips in. Go on, extend them, and then come back down to where we were. 